Hello Booktube, hello friends, welcome to Lizzie Pay Loves Books, I'm Elizabeth, and today as I'm filming this is February 1st, it's a Friday, so I'm going to try to accomplish several things all in this one video. Originally I was just going to make this my Friday reads and upload it today, but I just uploaded a video that I finally got around to editing that's basically my year in review so I'm uploading that on Friday so by the time you see this it'll be Saturday Sunday I don't know it depends on how long it takes me to edit this one but I will tell you what I'm currently reading and since it's the first day of the month I might as well go ahead and just wrap up January and give you my February TBR as I see it from this point so let's get started so for the month of January 2019, I finished a total of 21 books, and most of those were on audio. I only read four of those books in print, and one of those was a children's book, so I did not do very well with my print reading, but I think that may be how it's going to go for this year. I'm going to have to come to terms with the fact that I have a lot of things to get done, and not that much time to accomplish all the things in my house that I need to do. For this year, I am going to have to just average about four print books per month, and there may be some months that I don't even get that many read, and the rest are just going to have to be audio, and I love listening to audiobooks, so that's not a problem at all. The only problem is that several of the books on my TBR I can only find in print, or I would have to pay for them to get them on audio and I don't want to pay for them so we're just gonna have to see the main thing this is gonna affect is my read-alongs which I announced back in September of 2018 two of those series are not even available on audio at all so I don't know what's gonna happen with those but we'll chat about that on my Goodreads group and talk about that at a future date so let me show you the four books that I read in print first and then we'll talk about the audiobooks the most recent book I just read yesterday is Lucy Maud and the Cavendish Cat. It is by Lynn Manuel and it's illustrated by Janet Wilson. This is basically a children's biography of Lucy Maud Montgomery, who is the author of Anne of Green Gables and a multitude of other wonderful books. And I am interested in reading more biographies of Lucy Maud Montgomery and I thought this would be a good place to start. It's very sweet, very cute and it is from the perspective of her cat and it is um, it's very sweet and I enjoyed the illustrations there's the back cover and it's really a nice book I checked this out from my library but I'm gonna try to find myself a copy of this it's really adorable in the beginning of January I read two Christmas themed books and if you go back to my first Friday reads of January you can hear about them I read the nine lives of Christmas by Sheila Roberts and the Christmas star by Donna Van Leer and then I started one that took me a good two weeks or more to get read. It was We Wish You a Murderous Christmas by Vicki Delaney. This is book two in the year-round Christmas mystery series and I really enjoyed it. I really like how it wrapped up. I did not guess who the murderer was until it was revealed and then at the very end there was a new character introduced that I think will be an integral part of the next book and I really like that character and so it was just a lot of fun and I'm glad that I read it. So I listened to a total of 17 audiobooks during the month of January. So let's go back now to the beginning of the month and I'll tell you quickly about all the audiobooks that I listened to. For the first book of the year I wanted it to be something that was motivational and uplifting and I chose to reread a book that I had read in 2018. The book is Having a Martha Home the Merry Way by Sarah May and this book was very good. I said that I was going to start working my way through this book and I have not yet but that is going to be a goal that I have now starting in the month of February. The second book that I listened to was a very short audio book and I listened to this for Sarah's Audible Romance Challenge. The two categories that she chose for January were political and contemporary. So the political book that I chose was a very short book called Franklin Loves Lucy by Mary Matthews. Then for the contemporary category, I listened to Texas Cooking by Lisa Wingate. This is book one in the Texas Hill Country series. 
To help me wrap up book bingo, I needed a novella that was a holiday theme, and I found a novella that took place at New Year's by J.A. Jantz called Ring in the Dead. This was the next book in the J.P. Beaumont series that I needed to read, so it worked out perfectly for that. And it turned out to be a bit of a prequel to the series, so that was enjoyable as well. Then the other Christmas book that I read was on audio. It was A Christmas Guest by Ann Perry. This is book three in the Christmas Stories series by Ann Perry. My first book of really any length for the month was Scythe by Neil Shusterman. I, I absolutely love this book. I am really a fan of a good dystopian novel and this fill the bill. I'm really looking forward to the next book. I'm going to wait until my library has it available on audio. My husband read it because a lot of his co-workers were reading it and so I knew I was going to pick it up at some point. So while it was checked out from the library, I just went ahead and listened to it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. This is a book set in a futuristic society where death has been conquered basically and in order to keep the world from being overpopulated there are people who are appointed to be scythes and they randomly or sometimes randomly decide who is going to have to die so that the world will not become overpopulated. It's just very intriguing and compelling. If you love a good dystopian and that sounds interesting to you, then I would definitely recommend it. When I was searching for something to listen to on the first day of the month, I checked out a book on Hoopla by G. Brian Benson called Habits for Success. I ended up not listening to it that first day because I didn't think it was really going to wow me and I wanted something that I knew would really be inspirational for the first day of the year. I did go ahead and listen to it later in the month and it was good common sense advice but not really anything that I hadn't heard before. But it's always good to be reminded of good strategies and principles for improving yourself. For book club at my public library, I got two of the books read that I needed to read for the year. The first one was The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. I thought this was a great book. I listened to this on audio in my car and there were times when I would get where I was going or I would get back home and I would just have to sit in the car for a while and listen to at least finish the track I was on and I thought it was very good. This is only my second Kristen Hanna. The first one I listened to was Winter Garden, also for book club several years ago. And to help me prepare for my Jan Karen video, which I have already uploaded, I was reading several of her shorter books and children's books at the end of the year, and then in the beginning of January, I listened to the audio version of her three shortest books, The Trellis and the Seed, Jeremy the Tale of an Honest Bunny, and Miss Fanny's Hats, and they are all compiled into one audiobook called the Jan Karen Story Hour which was wonderfully narrated by Jan and her daughter Candace. I thoroughly enjoyed it. For one of my read-alongs on my Goodreads group I read book five in the Harmony series by Jody Thomas called Chance of a Lifetime. I thought this was very good. I'm really enjoying this series. Most of these books so far have had some suspense, a little bit of mystery. This book opens with a librarian named Emily and she has discovered some hidden messages from a girl to a boy and vice versa. They are hidden and written in the margins of books and there'll be a clue after one message as to where the recipient needs to go to look for the next message. And so the librarian has followed these clues and realized that these messages have spanned quite a few years. And then you don't really hear anything more about that until you go through the whole story and then you discover who was actually writing the messages and it's just really neat how it's all tied up together. And for the romance, this particular librarian is also the love interest in one of the relationships in the book. These books are just very good. Small town community drama with some romance and suspense. This is really my type of book and I thoroughly enjoyed it. For my mystery book club at the public library, for February we are reading Mr. Monk Goes to the Firehouse by Lee Goldberg, which is book one in the Mr. Monk book series. The Monk book series is based on the TV series. This is one of those few times where the TV show came first and now we have this novelized series of books. I had listened to this book already in 2018, but so it would be fresh on my mind, I went ahead and listened to it again. It's available on Hoopla. And because I enjoyed it so much, even the second time, 
I went ahead yesterday and listened to Mr. Mont Goes to Hawaii, which is also by Lee Goldberg, and this was a lot of fun. I was finishing up a jigsaw puzzle that's been sitting in my living room for most of the month, and so I just sped this up a little bit and finished it right about the same time as the jigsaw puzzle. This was fun because if you've ever watched the Monk TV series, you know that Monk does not fly. Well, one of the few ways to get to Hawaii is to fly, and so... You might wonder, how is Mr. Monk going to get there? Well, he didn't go by choice, but because his assistant Natalie is to be in her friend's wedding, and she has told him that she's taking a week's vacation, she is going to Hawaii to be in her friend's wedding, she gets on the plane and discovers that he has followed her there, and he's on the plane, and he is not himself. He has taken a prescription drug that has helped him to get over his fear of flying at least for a few hours and it totally changes his personality so it's kind of entertaining to see him so out of character of himself for at least a little while but at the same time you're kind of ready for him to get back to being himself because he's what makes the series so fantastic so this book is a lot of fun of course once they get to Hawaii they encounter a whole lot of things going on and a lot of different mysteries for Mr. Monk to solve and I thought it was a fun book. One of my best discoveries for the month of January has to do with Anne Bogle. Someone told me about her book called I'd Rather Be Reading and it's a very short audiobook which is narrated by her and I have already listened to it twice. Anne Bogle is also a longtime book blogger. She's known as the Modern Mrs. Darcy. And then I think about three years ago she started a podcast and I have really been enjoying listening to the podcast. There's 160 something episodes at this point and I have listened to about the first 30 and then on another day I had my Kindle and I couldn't get to the first few so I just listened to the more recent ones I've listened to a few of those and I'm just really loving those for most episodes she interviews one guest and she has them tell her three favorite books that they love and one book they hate and what they're currently reading and then she gives them three recommendations for books that she thinks they would enjoy based on what they love and hate. I've already added quite a few books to my TBR and I have a couple of them checked out from the library right now so I will show you those in a few minutes but I definitely recommend her podcast especially. The blog looks really great. I have looked at the blog a little bit. I don't read a lot of blogs simply because if I'm going to read something I would just as soon pick up a book but the podcast works great for me because it's sort of like listening to an audiobook and I absolutely love it. I read another book for book club this month as well. This is going to be our February pick for the regular literary book club at the library. The book is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. I talked about this a little bit already in my last Friday reads. This to me was not as engaging as other slave narratives that I have read. It was definitely worth reading, but it wasn't my favorite. Another book I listened to that wasn't a particular favorite, but it was free on Audible, was The Man on the Mountaintop by Susan Trott. This was one of the selections for the Audible Originals that Audible members can pick two of each month. And I'll tell you the main reason I decided to choose this one is because it was narrated in part by Stanley Tucci, who I think is a fantastic actor. He's just been in so many things. In fact, I really think the game ought to be three degrees from Stanley Tucci instead of three degrees from Kevin Bacon because it seems like he pops up everywhere. And this was um, this was an okay book. It was interesting. It was a bit of a departure from what I usually like to read. It was about a monk living in a hermitage and people would take pilgrimages to go and see him and they might only get to spend a few seconds with him. But really you learn that their journey to get there was where they had their most growth. They just didn't realize it until they were already done and headed home. So it was very interesting, but not anything that I absolutely loved. Another book that grew on me as I went along is Emma by Jane Austen. This was only my second book by Jane Austen. Several years ago I listened to Pride and Prejudice and I never really got all the hype. I just didn't understand why people love it so much. This one I think I liked a little bit more. At first I wasn't sure. It took me a little while to get into it. There were a lot of characters and different relationships and I had a hard time following all of that exactly. 
This was narrated by Juliet Stevenson. I listened to the Nexos version on Audible, and I thought she did a fantastic job, especially with the one character, I think it's Mrs. Bates, who is just a run-on talker. And the narrator just played her so well. It was just really fun. And then the uh, rather unlikable Mrs. Elton, she also portrayed her very well. You could just picture her nose in the air while she was talking, and I just thought she did a great job. And that really helped the book along for me. Now I've ordered the movie Clueless to watch again. I remember enough about it to be able to see the parallels and understand why people say that it's a retelling of Emma, but I want to see it again now while it's fresh on my mind. I also listened to a book by one of my all-time favorite authors, and I was super excited to find it. The author is Lucy Mon Montgomery, the author of Anne of Green Gables, and I was looking on Hoopla again again to remind myself of all of the Montgomery books that are available there and I discovered a fairly newly published book of short stories called After Many Years. This was just published in 2018. The book is comprised of 21 short stories that have never been published before. There are several people who are scholars of Lucy Maud Montgomery and have been combing through all of her journals and notes and things and discovered lots and lots of short stories that were never published during her lifetime. Many of those were published in the 90s and were bound up in different groups with different themes. And this particular group of stories were not published in any of those other bind-ups. So I was very excited to read these. You could see similarities to some of these short stories with plot lines in some of her novels. And also they compare with some of her other short stories. But I was very excited to read some stories by Montgomery that I had not read before. And now it's making me want to go back and reread many of her other books and short stories. There are so many of them. And I am just excited that I discovered these. So I think that's everything that I finished during the month of January. I had four books that I started in January that I was reading in print that I did not finish. So those are my current reads at the moment. Let me show you those before I move into my TBR. And I'm really disappointed in myself that I did not finish these books. I just simply did not take much time to sit down and read during the month of January. And I think what my goal going forward is going to be is to either read a minimum of 30 minutes a day in a print book and or read at least one chapter of each of my current reads per day and just not worry so much about getting them finished but just gradually working my way through them you know then i will do better and i will feel like i'm at least accomplishing something each day so here are the print books that i have started that i need to finish the first one is Sweet September by Trisha Goyer. This is book two in the Home to Heather Creek series. I am about half done with this. This is a really sweet story about a family of grandparents whose grandchildren have come to live with them because their estranged daughter was killed. So they have really not ever gotten to know these grandchildren and now they are living with them. And these children had been growing up in an urban area and now they have come to a working farm. I really Really enjoying it I'm just reading through it very slowly the next book is here lies the librarian by Richard Peck I picked this up because the word lies was the buzzword for books and Lala's buzzword-a-thon and now I wish that I hadn't even picked it up because it's really not pulling me in and I have read Richard Peck books before that I really enjoyed but I listened to all of them on audio and I can't find this one on audio unless I buy it and it just seems silly to buy an audiobook that is this short. This is even large print, super short. I don't know what's taken me so long. I think someone commented that they really enjoyed this book and they were able to get through it quickly. I don't know. For some reason, I'm having a hard time just getting into the story. I'm going to keep plugging away at it and hopefully at some point it will pull me in and then I can go ahead and finish it out a lot quicker. But for now, I'm just going to try to plug away and read a chapter a day. Another book I'm reading in print is on my Kindle. It is called Grave Mistake by Janice J. Richardson. This is book three in the Spencer Funeral Home Niagara Cozy Mystery Series. And this is really good. I just don't read on my Kindle very often, but I like to always have something going on my Kindle so that I can pick it up whenever I want to. A lot of times I would try to read on my Kindle at night as I'm going to bed, but I received a wonderful little book light from my family for Christmas. So that has enabled me to read physical books as I'm going to bed and not have to have 
the bigger lamp on. So I just haven't gotten to this very often. I'm about 10% in. So far, it sounds like it's going to be great. And hopefully I will finish it by the end of February. But if I don't, then there's always March Mystery Madness. So for my Cherry Cola read-along, the book for January is Queen of the Cookbooks by Ashton Lee, and I have barely started it. So those of you guys who are still in this with me and reading this with me, I apologize. I didn't get started on this till later in the month, and I was trying to finish up these other books, which then I didn't get any of them finished. But I still have a goal to finish this one and then read the last book before the end of February. If I don't, I'm going to lay them aside for March because March is March Mystery Madness and then pick back up in April. So for those of you who might have wanted a little more time to finish these, you may just get your wish. But anyway, if you're in this read along with me and you need more time, by all means, take as long as you need. And then when you finish, as you finish each book, even if it's next year, come back to the Goodreads group and let's chat about them. So for my 20 by 20 challenge, I'm going to do a full update on what I read and what I still have to read for the next two years. It's a three year challenge that I started in 2018 and I'm giving myself till the end of 2020 to finish it. And the number one on my stack of 20 is the Bible. So I'm giving myself three years to finish the Bible. So in in 2018 I got all the way through 2nd Kings so for January I read the book of 1st Chronicles so I am on track for where I need to be in the Bible for my reading challenge and then I decided that my devotional book for the year was going to be Jesus Lives by Sarah Young in the past I've read Jesus Calling and it is a dated devotional book where you have a devotion for each day of the year I thought this one was set up that way too, but it's not. There's actually only about 175 devotionals in this book, so this is not going to carry me through the year. I went ahead and started reading it, and I thought I would just go ahead and read it until I finished it and then pick up another shorter devotional book, of which I have several. But then I realized about halfway through the month that my daughter Emily was picking it up and moving my bookmark around. <laughs> so because they're not dated, I didn't know which ones I'd read and which ones I had. So I started over and now I have a little piece of paper stuck in here where I am writing down each day the page numbers that I read. Then I realized I had another devotional book that is beautiful and it has about 60 devotions in it and I want to give it to someone as a gift and I really want to read it first. So I decided to put this one down for now and this morning I picked up the other devotional book and I'm going to read through it over the next two months so that I can be ready to give it to someone on the next gift giving occasion and I'm not going to show you that today. When I finish it I will film a clip showing you what it is and then I'm going to send it to the person I want to send it to and then I'll insert that clip into a wrap up at some point. So I started this one but I'm going to lay it aside for February. Now I mentioned that besides my audiobooks I've been listening to the Ann Bogle podcast and so that has taken me away from reading a little bit. Uh, I've also been watching a few things this month. I watched the Christmas Train, which is based on the book The Christmas Train by David Baldacci. This was not quite what I was expecting. The movie is a Hallmark movie and it was very bright and cheerful and colorful and when I first listened to the book I didn't picture that it was going to be that bright. Now it's been about 40 years since I've been on a passenger train so I don't know exactly what they're like now but the train I was on was not nearly as bright and cheerful and well decorated as the Christmas train in this movie. Of course when I rode the train it wasn't Christmas time but I seriously doubt if real life trains look as nice as they are depicted in this movie. And the train station was so clean and beautiful. It looked like a hotel lobby. So that was a little bit unbelievable. But it was still a very nice movie. They made a couple of changes from the book that didn't bother me that much. So therefore, I enjoyed both the book and the movie. So I also watched a little bit of Netflix during the month of January. And I am caught up now on the TV series Anne with an E, which is based on Anne of Green Gables. I enjoyed it for the most part. I didn't agree with all of their choices for embellishments you know because some of the some of the episodes are based exactly on the books and then they had to write some stories in the same setting that didn't necessarily happen in Anna Green Gables much like Little House on the Prairie uh, so I didn't agree with bringing 
in everything that they did, but still I enjoyed the series overall and I would recommend it. Then once I finished in with an E, I was looking around my TV. There was a few DVDs sitting around that had been watched and abandoned and not put away. And I discovered a movie that I had bought at the dollar store several months ago, and it was still in the packaging, and I watched it. Tremors 4. I thought I had seen this one, but I hadn't. This is a prequel to the other three Tremors movies, and it was so funny. I am one of those people that will watch Tremors no matter when it's on. If I am flipping channels and I find that Tremors is on, I will watch it. I don't know what my fascination is with it. I've always loved that genre of movies where you have some sort of creature or bug that either multiplies or mutates and takes over an area. I don't know. I don't know why. I, I know. this. <laughs> I know, it's nothing like anything that I read, but I will watch stuff like this all day. It's It just cracks me up. So let's get to my February TBR. As I was saying earlier, I've come to terms with the fact that most of my reading for this year is really more than likely going to be on audio. It was last year, but I still had high goals as far as what I thought I could get read in print. This year I'm going to give myself a bit of a break and I'm just going to focus on the books that I know I can get read on audio and then a few select books that are top priority for print reading. That being said, I still have my TBR jar project which are going to be mostly all books that I need to read in print and I have some books checked out from the library right now that I learned about on Ann Bogle's podcast and then some of my read-along books are only found in print they are not available anywhere on audio so I'm just gonna have to prioritize and see how it goes so I have my six nonfiction books that I pulled out of my TBR jar I'd like to get to at least one or two of these during the month of February at first I thought I would go ahead and read the shortest one, which is The Twelve T's of Friendship, and then I looked at it today, and it actually has a section for each month of the year. So I might just stretch this out over the year and, and just read each month's section during that month. Of course, I need to catch up with January, but I don't know. If I get into it and just want to go ahead and, and read through it, I might do that too. We'll see. And and then I don't really know which of the others that I will pick up first. I might just go ahead and read the first chapter of the rest of these and see which one grabs me. I think what I did in November was I, I tried to read a little bit each day in each of the nonfiction books that I was reading. That was a little much. So I think I will pick out two or three of these and just try to read a little bit each day until I get those read and then pick up what's left and read after that. I think that will go better. I don't know. We'll see. But I definitely want to get at least a couple of these done in the month of February. For my read-along books, the next one in the Home to Heather Creek series is Circle of Grace by Leslie Gould. So I would definitely like to get to it. Then I need to read Home Song by Thomas Kincaid. This is the second book in the Cape Light series. I really enjoyed Cape Light and I tweaked the schedule for this read-along a little bit. So the plan now is to read the second book during January, February, or March, and then the third book during April, May, June, and then the fourth book during July, August, and September, so that we'll be ready for the first of the Christmas books once the holiday season starts. Basically one book every three months, so if you have not read Cape Light yet, you can still read it now, and then read Home Song next month, and then, you know, you'll be on schedule. I still had one more Christmas book that I had wanted to read in January that I didn't get done. I'm still willing to go ahead and read it in February, but it's not a high priority. So I'm going to leave it in the stack for at least the month of February. And if I don't get it read this month, then I'll just put it back with my Christmas books for December. And that is Patchwork Christmas by Renee DeMarco and Colleen Reese. This is a book of two short stories. It really doesn't look like it would take that long to read. It's fairly large print and it's only a little over 200 pages. So if I can get it done, I will. It's not high on my priority list. 
another book I had planned to read during January because there was a read-along for this on uh, Shayla's channel. I believe her channel name is Shay Geeks Out. And her and her reading buddy were reading Brightly Burning by Alexa Dunn. I met Alexa and bought this book at BookNet Fest in September. And I thought, oh, that's perfect. I will read this with them. They even had a live show and everything. And I just forgot all about it. So I put it in my pile for February. Again, now that I've missed the boat on the read-along, it's not going to be as high of a priority, but we'll see. I usually get in the mood to read some fantasy and sci-fi in February, and this is a retelling of Jane Eyre in space. Really looking forward to reading it. I just don't know how soon I can get to it. So a few other fantasy type books that I can get on audio from my library will probably be some of the first audio books that I listen to. I'm going to listen to Kingdom Keepers book four, which is called Power Play by Ridley Pearson. I have a goal to finish this whole series during my 20 by 20 project, so I'm looking forward to getting to this. And I need to catch up with my Rick Riordan series. I need to read book three of The Trials of Apollo, which is The Burning Maze. And then The Ship of the Dead, which is the third and I believe final book in Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. So these are gonna be fun. I can get these on audio CD from my library. And then a book that's been on my shelf for quite a while is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and I found that it's on the Audible Romance package. Uh, the book is Rose Daughter by Robin McKinley. My next book club pick for the public library is The Wonder by Emma Donahue. I don't really know anything about this, but I'm going to take this out to my car today and start it. And I don't have it checked out yet, but the next pick for our mystery book club at the library is Woman at the Window by A.J. Finn. And I'm thinking about doing that as a read-along on my channel during March Mystery Madness. So if you haven't read that yet and you're interested in reading it along with me, then that one I will probably save for the month of March. But I need to have finished it by the second Thursday of the month. So I might have to start it a little bit early, but we'll work that out. And then a few other library checkouts that I may or may not get to. I am really interested in this. This is Vox. The author's name is Christina. Last name D-A-L-C-H-E-R. This is Futuristic America where women are only allowed to speak 100 words a day and cannot hold jobs outside their home. This sounds a lot like Handmaid's Tale, which I loved. So uh, I think I heard about this on Jen's channel from Gen Talks audiobooks, and I have been intrigued to read it, so I don't know. I may abandon everything else and just read this. We'll see. Now, when I did my Jan Karen video the other day, I had at least one or two people ask me if I was going to make that a series and do videos about other authors that I love, and my answer is yes. So I'm not going to tell you quite yet who my next author is going to be, but I do have a couple of books checked out, and I have some more on the way that are biographical in nature, just to learn a little bit more about that author before I do that video. So I'm not going to show you those books, but then I will show you the books I have checked out that I learned about from listening to the Ann Bogle podcast. I have The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle. Greatness isn't born, it's grown. Here's how. This just sounded interesting. I don't know if it's anything that I will read from cover to cover, but I wanted to take a second look at it. And then one of the authors they were talking about was Kathleen Norris. And so when I looked up whatever book that they were recommending by her, I discovered this book with a title that could be my autobiographical title of me growing up. I grew up in a small town of Bennington, Oklahoma, and of course, this is going to refer to Bennington College in Vermont, but when I saw the title, I just ordered it so I could take a look at this book, and it actually looks pretty interesting. It's called The Virgin of Bennington, and it is by Kathleen Norris. I couldn't resist this title because I am not kidding you. I wore my virginity so proudly. I made that commitment to myself and to my mom and to God before I ever started dating and I stuck to it and I was really proud of that I wore it like a badge of honor and so when I saw this title I was like oh my goodness I have to get this book it's actually about a, uh, a young woman who comes from a very sheltered environment and goes to Bennington College in the 60s and it says she wasn't prepared for the sex, drugs, and bohemianism of Bennington College in the 1960s. So this definitely intrigued me and I had to get it. One of these I think I showed last week when I first talked about the 
podcast. I checked out Home Comforts by Cheryl Mendelson. And uh, this is a doorstop, <laughs> but it looks awesome. Another doorstop that I learned about on the podcast is 1,000 Books to Read Before You Die by James Mustich. Now, I have checked out and looked at a, a similar type book called 1001 Books to Read Before You Die that is by a totally different author. But this one really intrigued me, and uh, Anne interviewed the author on her podcast and, and then they kind of did a role reversal where he recommended books for her and uh, I thought it was really interesting so there's a checklist in the back of these 1000 books and I want to go through those and just see how many of them that I've already read I suspect it's not going to be that many I find that I'm really not interested in reading a lot of the weightier classics that you know all English majors have to read but I'm still curious about it and so I checked it out from the library Okay, so I probably will read a lot more audiobooks than what I've shown you, but I don't know what those are going to be just yet. So that's all I have today for my January wrap-up, my current reads, and my February TBR. Let me know what you're reading in February or what your favorite book of January was, and I would love to chat in the comments. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book, and God bless you.